Did LeBron be penalized for playing with super teams? Of course not. And by the way, I love Dr. J. I grew up loving Dr. J. But this is ridiculous. Dr. J, this is ridiculous. Who cares if the GM puts the team together or the player does? Let's look. look. Dr. J was the best player in the ABA. He was an ABA MVP. He was an ABA champion. He was an ABA scoring leader at double-digit rebounds. He's one of the all-time greats, and his fact has become underrated. He's, one, he's in that top, uppermost tier of greatest players ever. Let's look at that Sixers team he won a championship with when he was a little past his prime, but still an all-star. Maurice Cheek, see the all-star selections? Four-time all-star selection. Andrew Tony, Tony, a 20-point-a-game guy, two-time All-Star. Dr. J, one of the best players in the game. We're marketing now. We look back and say it was Magic Bird. But back then, the commercials were Dr. J versus Bird before they were Magic versus Bird. Ivoroni was a starting power forward, but Bobby Jones was off the bench, sixth man of the year. Moses Malone was the best player in basketball. We have People have funny memories about this. He used to give the Lakers and Kareem hell when he was in Houston. And he was an MVP, went to, the, went to the Sixers. He was a dude saying fo fo fo, meaning he's gonna sweep everyone. Then went four, five, four, swept the Lakers in the finals. <laughs> I mean, that's a super team. An MVP or multiple MVPs, multiple all stars. Who cares if the GM puts it together, Stephen A., or if the player does? That's one. Two, when you look at Dr. J's team, Stephen A., I don't think he knows really why he did it that way. It seems pretty obvious to me. The dudes he grew up watching and idolizing are all, all first team. The dudes he played against who came a little later were all second team and no new dudes. <laughs> because one thing is for sure, you can put any combination of players you want on the all-time team. Two guys have to be on every all-time team, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Those guys are on every all-time team. But the first team, those are the guys he idolized growing up because we always mythologize those people. And the other guys were the guys he saw and played against toward the end of his career, especially. And, and he respects them. And the new dudes, he doesn't have the same feeling for. Well, first of all, let me say this. Um, before I even address the point, um, I, LeBron shouldn't be penalized. You're right about that. But I want to say that Hall of Famers like Dr. J have a right to feel the way that they feel. If I take issue with Dr. J, it's that Wilt and Bill Russell won the same team. No. It's one or the other. You understand? It's one or the other. They went head to head against one another. They were the two iconic figures. You got to go at it. You got to pick one over the other. Both centers. You can't have them on the same team, number one. And number two, the great Carl Malone, one of the top scorers in NBA history, no doubt. Um, I wouldn't have had him on either team because, to be honest with you, as good as Carl Malone was, particularly in pick and roll situations, pick and pop situations, and clearly on the break as well, he could finish. I think, in terms of a back to back to the basket prototypical power forward, I would pick both Tim Duncan and Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale ahead of Carl Malone. I really, really would. In terms of 50, of 10 feet and in as a power forward, when the game, the way the game was played, Carl Malone back to the basket couldn't touch those two. Couldn't touch him. I don't care what anybody says. Not in terms of back to the basket. He could shoot perimeter shots. John Stockton fit him in pick and pops and on a fast break, sure. But in back to the back, no, back, back to the basket, no. Tim Duncan, Kevin McHale. So I wouldn't put Carl Malone second team. Now to get to your bigger point. When you brought up the Philadelphia 76ers, here's what I think you're missing, Max Kellerman. Dr. J isn't talking about just super teams. He's talking about you instigating the process. Moses Malone was traded to the Philadelphia. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to you, but it matters to them. In other words, they can't control what they can control. When you talk to Hall of Famers, which obviously you know that I do, the position is what you instigate, what you look for, what you want. Clearly. Rem remember, remember when Charles Barkley and LeBron James got into it because Charles Barkley was basically saying, what do you want, everything? I mean, damn, you don't want to compete? Now, obviously, Shaq... And Kenny Smith came to the defense of LeBron James because they felt that Charles Barkley went too far when he questioned his willingness to compete at that particular moment in time. I'm just using that to crystallize the fact that when Hall of Famers compare themselves to other future Hall of Famers and they're looking at the game themselves, it's not just the circumstances that you're living with. It's what you instigate. Dr. J didn't instigate that. Andrew Tony was drafted in the second. Uh, Maurice Cheeks was drafted in the in second round. Mark Ivoroni was drafted in the third round. I forgot where Andrew Tony specifically was picked, but those things happen. And so when I look at it from that perspective, I say, excuse me, 
Dr. J, no, I think I think he's wrong here because there's no way on earth you can have the second best player we've ever seen in the history of basketball, not even on one of the top two teams. That is ridiculous. That is blasphemous. And Dr. J is absolutely positively a. wrong. But as a Hall of Famer, I do understand what he is accusing LeBron of in terms of instigating something that Kevin Durant and others have now taken to another level. Well, I, I hear what you're saying about the way Hall of Famers perceive it. I'm sorry. I just disagree with them. Of course, they're entitled to feel. They built the game. They're entitled to feel however they want. I'm just saying, in the end, you got to play ball. And if you're on a super team, I don't care as a fan if a GM put it together or if you put it together. Now, I take exception to what KD did with the Warriors. They were already a super team. He chose, I'm going to join them. They don't have to give anything up. I'm just going to join them. And at that point, no one has a chance to do anything. But you remember the Sixers that year when they got Moses Malone? It was like, oh, 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 here they come. And they destroyed everybody. They destroyed. They swept the Lakers. So, you know, that, and that's Dr. J's championship. It takes a super team nine times out of ten to win a championship. Well, I don't know if any of LeBron's Miami teams were better than that Sixers team. No, you, you, but, but what you can't ignore is the point that Hall of Fame, and again, we're not getting on LeBron here because we both disagree with Dr. J. Okay, LeBron James, you can't have a first team in the NBA history without having LeBron James on it, as far as I'm concerned. But having said all of that, let's understand again what the point was. You say it doesn't matter whether the player or whether the team puts, the, puts you together. Well, you got to remember, the better the talent is around you, the less of a load you're asked to carry, no the less doubt. of a load you have to carry and stuff like that. So now we take that element, that component, Max, and then we say, you instigated it? You were looking? Because to, to a Hall of Famer, when they talk to me and they're like, hold them accountable, Stephen A. Make sure you hold them to the same standard you held us to. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.